Hi, my name is Ellis Michaels, and I was diagnosed with Bichette's disease at the age of 16 in 1997. In this short video, I'm going to tell you about my Bichette story, and I'm going to give you the short version. Um, if you want the long version, you can read my memoir. It's out there somewhere. Find it. Look for it. Um, but if you want to hear the short version, here it is. So, I was like I said, I was diagnosed in 1997, but I started having symptoms years before that. Um, in fact, I can remember symptoms as early as childhood. I used to call it mystery pain. I used to get these weird aches and pains all over the place, um, intense stomach aches, joint pain, all kinds of stuff. And I never knew what was wrong with me. You know, I was just a little kid. I just, mystery pain, that's what it was. It was just part of life. I just thought it was normal. Um, but then, once I got into middle school, I started getting these big ulc open ulcers in my mouth and on my balls. It was just fucking awful. Um, that I knew wasn't normal. I knew something was wrong, but I, I, you know, I didn't know what. And neither did my parents. Both of them were nurses, um, RNs, and you know, they, they didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, but we all, we all knew something, so something wasn't quite right. Uh, but then, in, uh, I forget how old I was, 15 or 16, my right knee swelled up to the size of like, like one of those, not a full-size basketball, but like those mini basketballs, you know, like, like a, like a really, really large grapefruit, you know, stiff as a board. I couldn't move my leg at all. Um, so I had to go see an orthopedic surgeon. He had no idea what was wrong with it. He just did what surgeons do. He cut me open and, you know, drained it and... That was that, but uh, that was just one more strange symptom to add to the list. But then, then one night I went to bed and I fell asleep feeling fine. I had been watching TV, you know, jerking off. I was, I was like, I was a teenager, you know, that's what I did. Um, and I woke up the next morning with the sharpest pain I've ever felt in my life in the back of my left eye, and I couldn't see at all. It was just totally blurry. Um, it, it was it was it was fucking terrifying. And I ran upstairs and I told my mother, which that alone, you know, she she knew she knew it was serious because I didn't I didn't go to them for anything unless I had to. So um, she, of course, this happened on a weekend, so had to go get a specialist who was not happy to come in on his day off. He was out gardening, and he he reminded me of that fact about a hundred times um, while he was looking around in my eyes, but he knew something was seriously wrong. He had no clue what the fuck it was like any of the other doctors I'd been to, but he had the foresight to send me to Mass Ioneer in Boston to see a retina specialist who did know what he was talking about. He did know what was wrong with me, and he's the one that diagnosed me with Bichette's disease. Um, it fit, it still fits to this day, and it, the diagnosis, he nailed it. Um, there's there's other stuff going on there too, but Pichette's is, is the big one. He nailed it. Um, the vision put me on, they put me on all kinds of drugs. Methotrexate, lot, shit loads of prednisone, like 100 milligrams a day. Colchicine, uh, I'll, I'll, tons of Vicodin. I mean, they were just throwing Vicodin, extra strength Vicodin at me, like 150 of them a month. Um just tons of tons of stuff, and uh, but I, I had the diagnosis, which meant nothing to me. But it was it was just nice to have a name for um, what had been fucking me up for so long. Uh, then at eighteen, I was working at McDonald's one night, and I I was walking to a party up the street, and it like it was a walk I've made a thousand times before, a ten minute walk, fifteen tops. It took me like an hour to get there because I had to keep stopping. My back was killing me. My legs were killing me. It was getting all swollen. I couldn't move my leg. Um, ended up getting hospitalized for a week to find out I had multiple blood clots um, in my leg, my back, and in my inferior vena cava, a vein going uh, from, my, from my heart. And they put me on Coumadin, and it was just awful. Um, my my leg was, even after the closet had broken up and everything, my leg was still twice the size of uh, my other leg for for years and years and years. My I, I hated it. I never wore 
I, uh, I always wore long pants. I never wore shorts because my legs, nobody else would probably notice, but I noticed. And it, you know, I was very self-conscious about it. But anyway, fortunately, I got into my 20s and kind of went into remission. The, the, the oral ulcers, the genital sore, they, they just kind of stopped on their own. And for I came off all the meds I was on. I came off the opioids. Um, and for years, I, I didn't even see, I didn't, for like five years, I didn't see a single doctor. I stayed as far the fuck away from them as possible. Um, and it was, uh, it was, it was nice. It was nice after, you know, 15, 20 years of being caught up in the, the bullshit medical system, having a break from it. But unfortunately in 2015, more clots, um, I had I had a brief episode of laryngitis, which hit me suddenly. I lost my balance. I couldn't. That just came on suddenly. And then a week later, more blood clots after nearly twenty years of of, uh, of not having any. So then I went on azathioprine. I went on Coumadin. I went on, you know, back on these meds. And um, the, the 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 silver lining of that is that. It was my, my other, I had clots in both legs, but it was the, the leg that, the smaller of the two legs that got it worse. And after, you know, after six months later, both my legs were the same size. They had both, for the first time in 20 years, my legs had, uh, had evened out, which was, which was nice. But then again, in 2018, more clots. And that's when uh, we decided to put me on Aliquis pretty much permanently. Um, and I haven't had any clots since, no major symptoms since. But anyway, that's that's just a, a quick kind of rundown. I, I, I could talk for hours about all the, uh, especially all like the skin problems, all the, all all the the acne, the cysts, the the cystic acne on my back, the folliculitis. The, 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 I, I could just go on and on and on, but I'm not going to do that yet. But if you want to, if you want to hear my full story. Um, you can you can pick up my book. It's called Finding Happiness Through Pain and Embarrassment: My Life with Bichette's Disease, a memoir by Ellis Michaels, um, and it's also available on audiobook if you'd rather listen to it. I know some people don't like to read or they can't read. People, a lot of people with Bichette's have problems with their eyes. Um, so if you want to hear my whole story, pick it up. I'll add a link in the description, and feel free to check out my website. There's a lot of I wrote a lot of articles about Bichette's disease, um, heavily cited. You know, real lots of information there. So I'll I'll also link that down in the description too. But that's my uh, the abridged version of my Vichette story. So I hope you. Uh, I don't know. I, I I hope your I hope your story is better than mine. But I'd love to hear it. So feel free to share anytime. Thanks for watching. I'm Ellis Michaels. Be well.